kind of funny because what I wanted to share tonight, like, I just kept thinking about it, and the two words kept coming to my head, follow me, follow me. And it's funny because I want to know where I'm following, and I want to know what the plan is so that I can follow. And it's just like, you know, the Lord sometimes, he has a sense of humor. So why, why don't we just follow him tonight and, and see where we go? Welcome to the house of the Lord. As I say in my moments, welcome to the house of the delighted father. You are the house of the delighted father. So it's awesome to have you guys here tonight. And I'm going to do communion, but I think we'll just hold it until the end. And I'll go ahead and just share a little bit of what the Lord put on my heart. Um, but let's open with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you so much that we already know that you're here in the midst of us because your word tells us where two or three are gathered in your name, you're there. And Father, I thank you that even more uh, than just your presence, your authority rests here in this place and your life rests here in this place, Father. And I thank you that you have gathered us together from our homes and into this place to spend time as the family of God. And so I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the needs of our house, Lord, for the ones that are homesick, that are um, becoming well, Father, for those who have lost loved ones. We're thinking of uh, Rhonda Rinaldi, Lord, and the passing of Jeff, Father. I thank you for comforting her as only you can, Lord. I thank you that you are God in the midst of your people and in the midst of your church. So we, we commit this time to you tonight, and we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would teach us just to follow in every season of life, every step of life, to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So go with me in your Bibles or on your phones to Matthew chapter 4. I'm going to start there, and I'm also going to go to John 21. But Matthew 4, verses 18 and 19. It says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So now flip with me to John chapter 21, kind of the ending of the Gospels, the very last chapter out of the Gospels in verses 15 to 19. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, now just a second before I finish reading this background, which you guys probably already know, is Peter has denied Jesus. He's gone back to, to fishing, and now Jesus is meeting him again where he met him to begin with, on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. So here Jesus is about to restore Peter. And so it says, when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto him, feed my lambs. He said to him the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto him, feed my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say unto you, when you were young, you girded yourself and you walked where you would. But when you're old, they will stretch forth your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you don't want to go. This he spoke, signifying what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that your word is eternal and it is forever settled in heaven. So may God it settle in our hearts tonight as we step aside to hear from you and what you would speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. So I think it's really interesting 
that the same words that started Peter off were also the same words that Jesus would leave with him whenever he was going. He started, follow me, and then when Jesus was leaving, he said, follow me. And isn't it true for you and I today? We start one place, and Jesus says, follow me, and then all of life is lived in between. I look into the scriptures, and I see all the life that Peter went through in the three years when he started following Jesus. He had no clue what he was getting into. And yet, Jesus didn't tell him. He just said, follow. Just follow me. And I think that it's interesting that we can believe that there is a God for years and years and years and still not know God. And I think a lot of times that's what we end up doing. You can ask people, do you believe in God? They'll just say, yeah, I believe in God. But if you say, do you know God? Half of us sitting in the, in the church pews can't really say, oh, yeah, I know, I know God. There's an entirely different thing. Even Peter, I think about Peter and how he had the revelation where Jesus said, who do men say that I am? And Peter said, well, um, some say you're Elijah and some say you're Moses. Well, who do you say? He said, you are the Christ. And Jesus said, yes, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, but my heavenly father. Peter believed that Jesus was the son of God by revelation, but there came a point where he finally experienced Jesus as the son of God. I believe that, that this was that point right here where he knew about God, but he didn't know God. He believed that Jesus was the Christ, but here when he was restored, he knew that Jesus was the Christ. I think that's powerful. It's, a, it's an awesome, awesome thought. So in between is where Peter walked every single day and got to learn God. And in between, when you and I begin to follow is where we actually get to know God. Day by day, moment by moment. In between is where I get to not just believe that he is real, but where I get to see and know him for myself. I think I'm really moved by the story of the man that's born blind in John chapter 9, I think it is, where, you know, it's the story where Jesus makes the mud and he puts it on his eyes and he tells him to go and wash. And after this great miracle happens, all these people are asking him questions. I think like three different times the Pharisees are like, what happened here? And finally, the guy just must have been totally exasperated and he says, all I know is I once was blind, but now I see. That's it. Amen. All I know, I can tell you of a certainty that that was the story of my life. You know, people could look back and think, huh? And I can only say, all I know is I once was blind, but now I see. All I know is that I believed in God, but now I know God. All I know is God said, follow, and I started off following, and he never said, stop following, and he's walked with me every course through every situation, and just like he started me off following, he continues to say, follow me. It's true for all of our lives. I, I don't know about you, but I can get overwhelmed by looking at the world around me. I feel like things are changing all the time. People that shouldn't be dying are dying. Um, you know, just it just seems like there's so much uncertainty. And whenever I start looking around, I begin to falter. And I begin to lose track of the following. And it's like, I can even get caught up in how is this supposed to look or that supposed to look? How's church supposed to look here or not supposed to look there? And I get so overwhelmed by everything going on around me that I miss the simple two words that Jesus said from the beginning that he says in the middle and he'll say it until he comes back. Amen. Follow Amen. me me follow me and so i love how 
the life of following Christ. And just so you guys know, we, we were talking about this earlier. I'm not good at like um, asking pertinent questions that get you to talk to respond to me. I'm not a good teacher. So if anybody has something they want to interject, since this is a small group setting, please just please just wave. Otherwise, I could just rant on. But but I want to just look for just a few minutes on God's keeping power, how he starts us off following and he continues us following. That I get to see him and I get to know him. So the first thing that I was kind of thinking about in this process of following is to actually know that I am chosen. It was not my idea to follow him. He picked me. All of the disciples, they didn't go looking for him. He went looking for them. There's a scripture that says, I believe it's Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. For he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. If that doesn't give you and I confidence today, is God for me? Is he not for me? Does he like me? Does he not like me? He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. It was not my idea to love him. He loved me. If he chose me, would he also not continue to walk with me every day? It's the testimony of your life, Aunt Dolly, where you know through every circumstance, you have been high and you have been low. Everyone he has walked beside you because you're chosen in him from the foundation of the world. He said in John chapter 15, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. You're picked for the team, Larry. Yay, you don't, you don't even have to be picked last. You're first. He loved you. He loved you. He loved me. That gives me such, such peace because I lived a lot of my Christian life very afraid that I was in one minute and out the next minute. I didn't really have very much security to know that I was my beloved's and he was mine. But these scriptures tell me, he said, follow me because I have chosen you from the beginning. There's another scripture that says he has appointed us to salvation. Woo! That, get, that gets me pumped up. I am not appointed to death, hell, and the grave for eternity. I am appointed a son of God. I am appointed to live a life that overcomes. Amen. Amen. Every single one. We are those people. I'm telling you what, let's leave this place pumped tonight because I, I am chosen. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, said, follow me, Miranda, because I have chosen you. And then he did this amazing thing. He covenanted with us. That's a powerful word. I think that a lot of us have lived as contract Christians rather than covenant Christians. We have lived working for God, working to try to prove. We, we've lived duty, and all along, he has made the way for us just to come into this place of love and relationship. I love this story in Genesis 15 of Abraham where it says, after these things, God came to Abraham, and he said, don't be afraid. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, well, what are you going to give me because I'm childless? And Eliezer, he's a servant in my house. He'll be my heir. And God made a covenant with Abraham 
in that place. And he said, you're going to have a seed, and they're going to go into their own land. And Abraham said, how do I know that, I'm gonna, that this is going to happen? So God made a covenant. And what God told him to do, I think this is pretty interesting. He took a whole bunch of different animals, and he divided the animals in half. And then he laid the animals out in half. And the Bible says that birds came and began to eat on the sacrifices, and Abraham was trying to beat, beat the birds off, and God put them into a deep sleep. And what would happen in those days, whenever they would make a covenant, they would call it to cut a covenant. And so they cut the animals in half, and then the people that were joining in a covenant would actually walk through the middle of the animals. And while they were walking through the middle of the animals, it was symbolic that what happened to those animals will happen to me if I renege on my part of the covenant. Pretty interesting, huh? So in this story in Genesis 15, Abraham, the one that God is going to come into a covenant with, he prepares the animals and he divides them out. But God puts Abraham to sleep, and God decides to make a covenant with himself. And it says that he passes through the middle of the sacrifices like a burning flax, a smoking reed and a burning flax or some, something like that. He appears like fire, and he walks through the covenant sacrifices. This is powerful because the God who cannot lie made a covenant with the God who cannot lie. And he said, I will do the thing that I spoke because this is who I am and I'm true. So that's cool. How does that apply to me? Hebrews chapter 10. We got to go there. It's so good. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16 to 25. So we can see throughout the Old Testament how God keeps his covenant with Israel, even though they have messed up a lot of times. And God keeps his covenant with Abraham. And he brings the people into a land. And then he says there's going to be a day when the tablets of stone that I gave you the Ten Commandments on, I'm going to write those on your heart. So this is what we see, Hebrews 10, verse 16. He says, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. In their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore brothers boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Now this is cool right here because it says, verse 20, it says, by a new and living way through the veil, that is to say his flesh. So when Jesus died, we know that it says that the veil was rent in the holiest of all from top to bottom so that man could have access into the presence of God. So Jesus, through the veil of his flesh, made a covenant as the covenant sacrifice. He was bruised. He was beaten so that you and I can walk through the torn flesh of Christ and come into covenant with God. Is anybody getting what I'm saying right here? This is amazing because the God who cannot lie covenanted with the God who cannot lie said, I will do it. And now all you and I have to do is walk through the veil of Jesus Christ and say, yes, yes, I'll take it. I'll take it. Wow. 
whoa, that, that is so, that's so awesome. And that's why he says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. What we know is God will always keep his side. And so we just keep walking. We just keep following day after day after day. So he chose us. He covenanted with us. And he's kept us. And he will keep us. 1 Peter 1.5 says that we are kept by the power of God. Uh, Ephesians 1.13 says that we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That word sealed is a word, uh, it's Arabon. And it means a deposit that guarantees the balance. Ah, this is so good. Because God gave us the Holy Spirit so that we would know that we were going to be with him again. It was like the stamp saying, you are mine. I'm giving you my spirit so that you'll know how to follow me. So that every day of your life you can be led by me and you can know of a certainty that I started you off. I'm with you in the middle and I will get you to where I intend for you to be. If you leave out of here tonight with nothing else, you can leave knowing that God is 150 million percent with you. And he's never going anywhere. Because the God who cannot lie makes covenant with the God who cannot lie. And he says, I want you right in the middle. Yes. He says in Jude chapter 1 verse 24, now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. I we had DOK last night daughters of the king and and I shared with with the ladies how we got to take communion with the Malawi women we we took our little we took these with us and we we took communion and it was a powerful time because it was the bride of Christ in Malawi getting to take the covenant meal with the bride of Christ from America and it, it was such a beautiful thing because we read in Ephesians chapter 5 where it says that Jesus is presenting to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. He is presenting to himself. He's doing the work. He's keeping us. He's perfecting us. He is watching over us, and he's preparing the bride. Guys, he, all of us, he's preparing the bride. We can see it. If we, if we don't see that there's something happening in the earth today, that God is moving among the church, then, then we're, we need that touch, that we're, we're blind and we need to be able to see because he's preparing the bride. He's getting us ready. God, Jim, you're the bride. I'm sorry. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. <laughs> but he's preparing us. <laughs> he's chosen us. He's covenanted with us. He keeps us. And then here's the thing. I have the power to choose. Because I love how he says to Peter three different times, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter says, yeah, I love you. Was Peter's love perfect? Jesus knows that we want to serve them with all of our hearts. That we're not perfect. He says, I know. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. And one thing that, but that got my attention as well was when Jesus first called Peter, he said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. He met him while he was fishing. This 
last time, whenever he begins to tell them what he'll do in the future, he says, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. So the fisherman becomes a shepherd, but the command is still the same. Follow me. So every season of life, it could look different. My life right now does not look like how I thought it was going to look. And you know what? Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. I don't know exactly where I'm going next. Does that make me go home? Yes, it does. But you know what? He said, follow me. Follow me. I've chosen you. I've covenanted with you. I kept you then. I will keep you in the future. Just choose me every single day. Every day. Peter, do you love me? Yeah. Follow me. Follow me. Anybody have something they want to add? Comment? Just what you're preaching and you're saying and making it so real in my life because for many years of what I went through, God was there. He never left me. And I didn't even learn any of my mistakes that I made or knew that I had I was walking away from the Lord. And I came back, and he still has been so faithful. He goes faithful from day to day and through all of our sins. <laughs> God has been there. Yeah. He never left me. Yeah. And that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I can't help but feel unworthy of what. God looks at me, he knew what he was getting, and he still said yes. <laughs> that, I, I, I said, I've found myself saying that a lot, particularly this year, um, but it's just the reality of that. He never, I can't destroy God's illusions of me because he didn't have any to, be, to begin with. He knew what he was getting, and he still said yes. For whosoever would believe. Whosoever. The covenant, the covenant is there. No one is excluded. That is, it's Larry, it's like the scandal of grace. Like, it's scandalous. How could it be that he would say yes to me? But he did. He does every day. And our choice is. The most precious gift that he has given us apart from the blood of Christ is the power of our own choice. 
And so every day, I get to take the most precious thing that God has given me and choose him back. Every day. That's, that's awesome. And when we stray, he reminds me. Yep. He said, hey. <laughs> or I have something planned out that I'm going to do, and it falls all apart. And then I'm downcast. And then all of a sudden, I find out that's led to something else that was even better. And you know that's his hand doing that. Now, we're not going to let you settle for second best. You're going to do it and receive the maximum blessing. Because he loves us. He's chosen us in him from the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. We're blameless tonight. Blameless. Let's go ahead and get our communion. Let's take our communion together. I think this is a good time. This covenant meal, as it's called. I love taking it every time we gather together. I think it's awesome. I think I know the scripture, but I'm going to flip to it anyway. Oh, cool. So Paul writes, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given th thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for the bread of life. Thank you for the broken body of Jesus Christ. I thank you that he was bruised and he was broken for our healing. Father, I thank you today that as we receive your body, we receive all of your life, health for all of our bones, um, wholeness for all of our mind, strength for every part of our physical man. In Jesus' name, amen. You take your bread. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Father, thank you. Thank you for the covenant. I thank you that your covenant, it speaks a better word, that your blood speaks a better word, that it is always availing before your throne. I thank you that when you look upon each one of us, that you see the blood of Christ, you see the covenant, and you continue to say yes to our lives, Lord. So as we receive this cup in the blood of Christ, we say yes to the life of Jesus in return, and we receive redemption and salvation through his blood spilled on our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Well, does anybody have anything they'd like to add tonight? I think that's all I have. <laughs> Don't forget, um, we have many ways that you can give online. <laughs>
Look on all of our various platforms, you'll find it in the chat. You can give in the back or the Abundant Giving app. And also, just in reference to announcements that I do know, Gather Around the Table is on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, which is, does anybody know that date? Two weeks. Okay. 23rd. 23rd. So, yeah, gather around the table. There is a sign-up sheet in the back, and I believe you can sign up online. Um, this Sunday night is also at the table with PD, um, so you can, you can gather at our house if you'd like. Anybody's welcome. Me and Mom and Tim, we're going to be out of town this weekend. We're going down to North Carolina for Operation Save is having a banquet, a fundraising banquet, and so we're traveling down there but we'll be back next week um so love you guys thank you so much for coming yeah let's pray real quick father thank you i thank you for the gathering of the family and i thank you for this time in your word i ask that you would go with us you keep us in safety and in peace until we get to see one another again lord thank you in jesus name amen